All right, so here's what I did to figure out where I need to cut and mount this plate. I uh, slid the axle through. It's on the hubs, and then I have two lug nuts holding it there straight. I made sure it's level with the level. It is level. Then I just quickly mocked up the bearing and the plate and the two um, bearing holders, and then slid it all centered on top of where the stock transaxle would be mounted and then traced out the outline of where that bearing plate is. Now I'm not going to cut all of that, I'll cut a little bit on side, on side of that to give myself some places to weld to, but um, so yeah. So then all I'm going to do is pick all this up so it's more like a, you know, standing level or something and then transfer the measurements to the other side and uh, start cutting. I'm going to have to clearance some of this stuff over here. I'm going to have to remove some brackets over there so it's a nice flat chassis and get working on cutting that stuff up over there. Okay, um, I have the lawnmower lifted and I'm going to go swing it over there on top of those sawhorses. Took a little negotiating, but uh, I got it swung over and uh, placed on top of my uh, saw horses. So, we're back here looking at the back of the uh, racing lawnmower, and um, I kind of lucked out, I guess. It turns out that if I leave this bracket here and place my bearing plate right on the top of it, I can sort of eyeball the middle of this bracket in here, and it actually puts me about exactly where I want it to be before. It, I'd end up, it ends up raising the back of the mower about another quarter of an inch, but I'm never going to notice that. I mean, ultimately, it's still just a lawnmower. It just goes a little bit faster, uh, maybe a lot faster. But uh, it'll give me more wiggle room in terms of ground clearance, um, so I can make sure I, if I ever actually enter a sanctioned race that um, it will pass tech. Um, so I just left the bracket on the other side and did the same thing, popped it right there, kind of eyeballed in the middle, and then traced out the outside of it. Um, you know, again, it's still just a lot more, so eyeballing will work. Um, and this channel is mostly based on eyeballing. Uh, so, it's there. So what I have to do now is remove this bracket, um, and then figure out where I want to cut. And then, I guess, uh, I'm going to have to sandwich another piece of metal in here, because this um, is a stamp piece that then gets bolted to the side of this stamp piece. So to fill that gap, I could fill it with weld, but I might as well find a piece of what looks like mm, maybe eighth inch at most to fill in this little blank spot so I can then get a nice solid weld on it. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. It's a little windy out there. All right, I guess I've had another slight change of plans. Instead of finding something to fill the gap, I actually just sliced this back section of the uh, frame off so I can just place the bracket right in there like that. And I've mimicked the same thing on the other side. I just have to now carve out the uh, half circle from the main section of the frame. And then I can just you know weld it in there nice and solid and uh, continue on forwards. So, where is... Just have to hold it on there like so. Mark a mark with my pencil. It only has to be approximate. I'm probably gonna cut more than that out of there just to give myself some wiggle room. Then the same thing on the other side. This side actually fits better. 
But, uh, yeah. and there you have it. Probably going to pull the plasma cutter out and cut that, make it a little easier on myself. And then, with a quick snap of the fingers, I get a nice half circle there that this plate fits on top of nicely. Um, so I'll be able to run a weld all the way along the side. Um, I have to drill a hole in this frame for a bolt that will go through there, as well as one of these, so I might have to drill that hole out. Um, and then, yeah, it uh, will go in there. Um, I might drill an additional hole here and here to do a rosette weld to give it some extra strength because I won't be able to really weld, run a weld over here at all. But, uh, but yeah, and this pretty much looks exactly the same on the other side. Okay, it's now the, actually the next day and uh, I'm back here. Um, like I said, I believe in the last clip or video, um, I fit the bearing plates on both sides of the chassis. Um, this morning I just came in and removed the rest of the shifter. It was kind of in the way. I don't really need it anymore. But I'm just going to check my measurements, check fitment, and uh, clean up this outside edge of where I have to weld and uh, start welding and then oh before I do that I have to look at that plate see if I want to drill some more holes to do some rosette welds here if I can and uh, yeah here's a view of the other side same thing I used the old uh, axle mount and uh, traced it out cut the same hole all right the sides all cleaned up um, I ended up making an extra hole I ended up making an extra hole on the bearing plate, this one over here, to give another rosette weld over there. Um, and one thing I can do now is pull out that old miller over there and uh, get it set up to start burning some steel in. Um, I'm probably going to lay a practice, uh, practice weld down on something because uh, that weld is usually a bit finicky to get set up right for the steel you're welding. All right, I used the 90 degree grinder with a little sanding stone on the front to uh, clean this up. Um, I got the uh, miller over here kind of set up. Um, I was mistaken, this is actually 3 16 and this frame is actually about eighth inch. So I got it set up so it'll work. I got a nice little tack over there. But uh, just checking my final fitment, I'm just gonna get a clamp so I can clamp the two pieces together better to squeeze up a gap that's back there and then I'll uh, start filling in the corners and stuff and uh, you know continue. Well it's on there and it's definitely not going anywhere now. I have it welded on the front and the back. I just have to uh, drill that hole through the lawnmower frame so I can get the bolt through there for the bearing holder. Um, yeah I'm a little bit out of practice for welding but you know it'll take me you know, maybe another couple passes and I'll get, you know, back in practice, but it's stuck together, the metal, the metal is definitely, uh, melted into one. Um, there's the other side. I used, uh, a few of the chassis holes that happened to line up as some more rosette weld spots, but, uh, definitely not going anywhere. Now to just line everything up so it matches the other side on this side because I'm going to have to end up filling this gap in a little bit because this has got cut a hair too much to the back. But uh, yeah, just going to clean this up, line it up, and then burn that other one in. All right, I got both sides burnt in on this. Uh, I'm just going to let this cool off, probably eat lunch, and uh, clean it up, throw some primer on there, and then I can start uh, actually probably mocking up the rear end so I can measure for sprocket, brake disc, and stuff, and uh, I gotta also um, line up the uh, Peerless 700 transmission. I gotta figure out where exactly I want to put it on the chassis to convert the lawnmower engine to that transmission to then the sprocket to run the uh, live rear end back here. Um, 
I also got a couple parts for the engine that I can install and uh, give that another test to see if it makes it run smoother.